I'm Greg Ogilvie. I'm an oncologist and an internist here at California Veterinary Specialist Angel Care Cancer Center. Well, the, uh, you, it should be clearly, clearly understood in veterinary medicine, our prime, our absolute, total, complete goal is to ensure quality of life exists not only after treatment, but during treatment. So that is a unique, distinct difference in the way that we approach cancer cells and cancer and our patients. We need to defeat them, but not at the expense of quality of life. And so there are so many things that can be done to ensure that uh, the patient has a, a great quality of life. That's by selecting therapies that we know are going to uh, help and not hurt. Second of all, make changes during the treatment process to ensure that if that patient is uniquely sensitive to the therapies, that changes are made to ensure that that quality of life is sustained and maintained, and that, that is a very important. The third thing that's very important is that the quality of life of, uh, for all of us, including our pets, is actually influenced by the world around them. So if the family, if the veterinary healthcare team is despondent and sad and depressed, that affects the, the patient, the dog or the cat or, or whatever we're treating, because they then are sad and they then are more likely to have a, a poor quality of life. So enhancing the, the positive outcome of all people, including the veterinary healthcare team and the family can be very important. In addition, it, it's important to realize uh, that at regular exercise is really important. That animal loves to do certain things and that should not be impeded or impaired just because they're undergoing therapy. That's what brings them joy. That's what makes them feel alive. And the same thing for all of us. We need to do the things that we love to do because that's the whole point of a good quality of life. So it comes down to the three realistic commandments. Number one, we absolutely want to make sure that, that every patient is comfortable, that there is no pain. No pain from the disease and no pain from the treatment. Second of all, everyone, when they think of cancer therapies, they think of vomiting and diarrhea and all kinds of misery, and that's usually not the case. But it, because we have that fear, we give our clients a little first aid kit that they can use to prevent or to treat any nausea and diarrhea. And after the first few weeks, most clients say, wow, it really is exactly as we said, they do great, but they still can intervene to be able to help their pet with these medicines if they need to. Uh, need to. Lastly, the, 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 a critical thing for every patient is nutrition. It's the first thing our clients note when their pet is not feeling well. Doc, she stopped eating. And when, they're, when they start feeling better, the first thing they say is, wow, she started eating. It's, it's, nutrition is equated with quality of life. And therefore, we, we want to do everything we can to enhance that uh, quality of life with good nutrition. Well, there's actually a fourth. Uh, the, probably the, the greatest concern of people bringing their pets with, uh, with cancer to us, they have the biggest fear that they have is actually hair loss. And the, because we're very vain, we, we, we comb our hair in the morning and we want to look very good, good as we go through the day. Our dogs and cats, not so much, but we, that's a very important thing to us. So hair loss is a real big deal for human cancer patients. The good news is dogs and cats almost never lose their hair. So once we inform clients of that, it's a huge relief for them. They're just so relieved that that's, that's the case. Um, I think that the key thing is that quality of life is our absolute objective and we want your pet to get better, but we no don't want your pet to get better at the expense of quality of life. The other thing that is important to realize is when you go through an experience of treating your pet with cancer, you learn a lot about how you can deal with the disease yourself. And it, it makes you uh, better uh, as a parent, as a spouse, as a friend, uh, because unfortunately, uh, one uh, out of three people in, in this world will get cancer, and one out of four will die of cancer. So it's a huge problem in people, 
just as it is in, in animals. As we talked about, cancer is a devastating disease in the industrialized world for dogs and cats, with the vast majority of them succumbing to that. Most of them die because they haven't received therapy, and that's the sad thing. We can do so much more if we're allowed to. So see your veterinarian with any new lump or bump, anything that has not been there before, have it checked out. Because early diagnosis and early treatment is the best way to cure cancer in people and in animals.